Well, basically I got into this topic as an extension of a book I wrote a number of years ago on government failure versus market failure. That book looked at the eff efficacy of government policies in trying to correct market failures and generally had sort of negative findings that things didn't tend to work out. And I wanted to get a deeper look at really the sources of where we had problems, and particularly interest groups. And lawyers were an obvious interest group to me, although they actually haven't received much attention as one. And so I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at sort of policies that benefit them and the p types of ways that they influence policies. The you know, standard re characterization of the legal profession is there are too many lawyers already. And the last thing we need is a policy like deregulation that's going to lead to more lawyers. Well, the real problem is you've got to correlate the supply with the prices. You know, at this point, there are probably too many lawyers getting very high wages. But you start lowering prices, which you'll get with competition and deregulation, you'll wind up getting an increase in demand for lawyers. Now, couple that with additional services or new services, you'll even get more employment in legal services. So contrary to beliefs that there's an excess supply of lawyers, what we actually could really have in a more competitive and innovative legal industry, a lot more employment in such an industry. And this is exactly the same kind of thing that happened under deregulation in other industries. Lower prices, new services lead to more demand and more employment. The argument for uh, occupational licensing in the legal profession is basically based one on information and quality. That is, people really don't know or can't judge the quality of lawyers, and so we need to attack this policy by ensuring that those who practice in the profession have met a particular standard, and that is passing uh, a bar exam. And so our recommendation that we liberalize entry and allow people to practice is met with a response. If you do that, you'll get all sorts of unscrupulous and dishonest and incompetent people that will ruin this profession. Okay, first, we've got these people now. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to look too far to hear stories about, you know, this lawyer being indicted for participating in some financial scam or this lawyer being indicted for unethical behavior, so on and so forth. There's a lot of that now, so it's not necessarily keeping out you know, bad people. And I might add, it's not so much incompetence, it's actually people who you just don't understand really what they're doing. Now, what people overlook is when there are information problems, there's a private sector solution to them. So instead of having erecting an entry barrier, you know, there are market mechanisms that could easily come into face, place. You know, a Zagat's, if you will, for a lawyer or an Angie's List for lawyers. I mean, certainly there will be rating agencies. If there really is problems of quality, you'll find people who actually say, look, we're gonna keep track of lawyers' performance, and these are the kinds of things that can be used. Also, there are general business laws. You know, we don't have deregulation and say, oh, by the way, you're allowed to practice here, and you can swindle people, and we won't prosecute you. I mean, there are also things of that nature. So. I think a combination of market responses and existing laws would certainly be enough to you know, hold down the kind of incompetence and fraud that would be excessive. Uh, we're going to get that as we do in, in all sorts of industries. It's one thing to sort of recommend a policy that you think would be socially beneficial, then it's another then to face the political realities of this. Okay. I think the interesting thing about deregulation of lawyers, it's not something that we need to have an act of Congress, something we need to enact immediately at the national level or federal level. This is something that the states can do in terms of experiments, and that's probably the way to do it. That is, first, it would be nice if a few states at least sort of explored the possibility of people who are not lawyers, but legal practitioners, paralegal or whatever, providing simple legal services without the assistance of a lawyer in the same way that we have physician assistants now providing these kinds of services. That would at least open people's eyes to the fact that there are a number of things you don't need for three years of law school. And once we start moving in that direction, then I think that, that kind of policy could be expanded. Even training for people who want to do those things, again, opening up vocational and online law schools and the like. And we can start building slowly momentum 
for the benefits of deregulation through these small experiments. Building these things up until we have a few states that moved full deregulation will show the benefits for other states and that's how we're gonna get this policy enacted. So I think take it slow and do it incrementally, but I think that will open people's eyes and eventually that's what's gonna carry the day.